Thank you for joining us today. I'm Julia with Rethink Retail, and we are going to talk about a very innovative technology, uh, autonomous retail. And we have a view from three different angles today with us. Steve Gu, co-founder and CEO of iFi, a company leveraging computer vision and AI to offer checkout free or frictionless shopping. Mike Fogarty, the founder and CEO of Choice Market, and it's a grocery store. They recently employed this feature in their new location in Denver. It's very cool. If you haven't seen it, make sure to make a stop and check it out. And of course, Sucharita Kodali, Vice President and Principal Analyst at Forrester. She's going to bring some industry insights to this conversation. It's going to be very interesting with all three of us on the call today, well, for uh, an analyst, a retailer, and a technologist. So a lot of different views and and it's the perfect time for this technology. Although there is a current labor shortage, we're hoping that that will go away soon. And with that, AI and people will be working alongside each other. So Sucharita, how will this look when they're sharing tasks with artificial intelligence? There are, I think, a lot of um, ways for technology to help augment um, the human experience. I think that what we um, want to be careful about is, uh, is the notion that, oh, this is about replacing um, labor or that this is about um, you know, kind of eliminating labor. And that's actually not the case at all. In fact, um, you know, over the last couple of decades, whenever we've seen technology come into stores, it's often to take away some of the tedious tasks and empower those store associates to be able to focus on higher value um, activity, whether it is, um, you, you know, kind of managing replenishment, the look and feel of the store, or handling um, issues that may be customer service related that can't necessarily be um, be automated. So, um, in that way, it really is about that that one two one two punch um, and being able to get the best out of the store associates that that are that are there that you're able to find and and retain. Excellent. So Sutrida, you said it's not really eliminating labor. Um, Mike, what's your take on this from the retail side? Yeah, I mean, I think retailers now more than ever are facing a lot of challenges across labor, uh, product inflation, and just you know, staffing in general. So I agree that this technology certainly will help supplement and, you know, empower our, our staff to to really, you know, focus on what we call val value-added activities, right? And and certainly, by by employing things around frictionless checkout or even other types of AI, uh, whether that be product recommendation, et cetera, that ultimately allows our staff to focus on creating high-quality food, providing the highest quality customer service, uh, and, and really just providing the customers the best possible experience. Especially in our scenario, we, you know, this we we employed a hybrid shopping experience, which allows the customer to choose how they want to check out. And, and so certainly our stores are, are not quote unquote cashierless. They're very much are staffed by a team of folks that are providing the highest level of customer experience. So I agree wholeheartedly that, you know, it will augment and help support our staff, but not replace them altogether for sure. And that's so important because we've been hearing about customer service and uh, customer experience for years now, and it's it's applicable in all retail environments, including grocery. Besides the obvious benefits of the checkout free frictionless experience, what are some other maybe not so obvious benefits that AI can provide? Steve, I'll pass this to you as the technologist on the call. Uh, sure, I think the convenience and the greater user experience is of course the key. Uh, for success. Uh, but I want to also highlight three additional benefits from AI. Uh, the first is about uh, uh, more store hours. Uh, so with the autonomous store platform, we can now enable the store to run 24-7 nonstop. Uh, so, you know, historically, even today, it's actually very hard to, to run a store uh, nonstop because you have to worry about the shifts and the coordination, a lot of uh, efforts uh, going into that space. But with the, the, the AI and the modern technologies, um, the store can run almost by itself, right? So we actually have early success with some of our clients that off hours and the weekends contribute significantly to their uh, store revenue. Uh, that's that's uh, one thing. And the second is about uh, more traffic. We, we actually just launched an autonomous store with um, with Verizon, partnership with Penske uh, at Indy 500. And that particular day, you know, there are 
130,000 people going through the stadium. And then imagine all those people going through that shop. Within a single hour, then we witnessed the hundreds of people uh, going through that, that store. Uh, and it's simply impossible for a traditional shop, whether using self-checkout or cashier checkout, to process that volume of transactions. But the autonomous stores can. So that's another great benefit of handling that amount of crazy traffic within a short uh, time window. And the third is about uh, the, the data platform. Uh, you know, we've been talking, we've seen tremendous amount of growth on the e-commerce side, but you know, the physical shopping remains as the, the dominant form of sales uh, in the foreseeable future. Um, what we are doing essentially is to use AI to bring that e-commerce level of convenience and efficiency back to the physical world. Imagine this uh, autonomous store where you have hundreds of cameras producing trillions of pixels every second. And that amount of information is, is um, stunning, right? So with that, you can understand precisely who is grabbing what, where, when, and how. So you can uh, use that to, to give retailers a very meaningful feedback about uh, inventory, user preference, about um, uh, stock out, and, and potentially personalization tailored to customers as well. So uh, yeah, in my view, just to summarize in about more hours, more traffic, and more data. Excellent. And with the more traffic, as you said, the Indianapolis 500, the amazing nano store that you guys had there, just handling tons of people coming in and out in a quick burst. Sucharita, from the analyst side, what other retail applications can you see this working well for? Or how are you viewing this technology? The idea of a nano store, I think, is brilliant for every retailer um, across every sector. It's um, a fantastic way to create a pop-up environment and to have it be relatively cost-effective. It can be great for um, an event like, like, a, like a sporting event, like the one that Steve described. It could be um, an environment of like selling, um, you, you know, kind of either consumables or um, school supplies at, uh, you know, kind of when a university opens or, it, you know, any place where people are congregating um, for a short period of time, it makes a ton of sense. Um, it is it's also, I mean, we've seen great applications of these kinds of stores, um, even in um, in remote locations, for instance, or food deserts, or places where it may be really. Um, it may not make a ton of sense to, to staff a, a complete store, um, but you, you know, as Steve had mentioned, there's that 24/7 capability, and if you um, you know can take advantage of all of the information you know about what sells or what's um, what's needed, it provides um, a great solution um, for for that that end goal. It has that ability to. Um, you know, be relocated as necessary, and um, you know, it's there's a there's a portability component which is really attractive as well. Absolutely, and you said wherever there's a large congregation of people, this makes a lot of sense. I've heard airports being thrown out there, uh, hotels, things of that nature, and Absolutely. obviously Choice Market with Mike. Uh, I want to ask you because your store is a hybrid, so customers have the choice. They can use the traditional checkout method or use the technology. I know when I visited, I saw both going on. So what would you say is, is the general uh, appetite for this? How are consumers responding? Yeah, I think, you know, in, in the three short months we've been open, we're seeing a lot of adoption. You know, initially we were getting about 20, 25 orders a day going through Choice Now. Now we're getting up into the high 40s and 50s. So we, we track, oh yeah, exactly. So, it, you know, adoption's there, the basket size is growing, uh, and repeat customers are returning and using Choice Now sometimes three, four times a week, um, especially given our this, this particular location, which is at the bottom floor of a, a luxury apartment complex. So we have folks that are sometimes in there multiple times a day and treat it as their pantry. So uh, no doubt we're seeing the adoption that we, we anticipated, um, but we're also looking at other formats that could potentially be, you know, fully cashierless like the nano store, or even smaller footprint, micro marts, et cetera, that whether it be, yeah, as Sutrita said in a airport or a, even um, uh, the food deserts is something we're looking at very carefully because, you know, if we can keep our labor down, our occupancy down, those are two of our largest co cost drivers. Ultimately, we can then price these groceries 
for the community more aggressively. And, and so for us, we think it's it's a great solution for food deserts and something that we're actively pursuing. So um, yeah, no, I think overall we're, we're pretty excited about the early data that we're seeing around adoption and basket size, et cetera, and excited to look at you know new formats as well. So. Yeah, well, I just want to add to what uh, Mike said that it, I, I think it's really encouraging to hear that, you know, we, we got, uh, we saw this basket size increase and this uh, amazing custom adoption from choice market. So that's really exciting, uh, Mike. So I want to also highlight that uh, uh, although we talk about the hybrid mode, uh, I want to mention that this is actually quite challenging from a technical perspective. So compared to Amazon Go, you know, which is a binary monocular shopping experience where you have to use an app to use a shop, um, being able to handle you know, both existing customers going through the cashier channels and those app-based users uh, actually pose more challenges for the technology side. And uh, we are very proud of from our iFi side that you know, our solution is able to handle that uh, complex situation. Um, the, the fact that you know, uh, the hybrid mode uh, can work uh, is really thanks to our technology advancement where we are able to configure our solution to be able to use ceiling cameras only without um, depending on additional sensors or smart shelves. It really uh, lowers the cost dramatically and, and make it very easy to retrofit and adapt to any store environments. And Choice is a great example of that. So Steve, you're pointing to the flexibility of your solution, but also how it is very complex. Um, and I think that a lot of people might not know retailers specifically about all of these solutions out there, the hybrid models, camera only, fully autonomous. Sucharita, are, are retailers aware from what you're seeing about the, how autonomous shopping works and what's out there? There are um, differences that we've seen in the technology approaches. Um, as you mentioned, Julia, there are um, the solutions that um, may have cameras, but also sensors on shelves. And that tends to be a little bit more expensive, actually quite a bit more expensive than, um, you know, say a camera only solution. There are lots of different ways to approach it. And I think that it's going to vary depending on the retailer's budget, their, um, you know, the, the store format that you're talking about, the type of merchandise. Um, we've seen deployments where it can be in a certain part of a store. Um, so it may be a larger store, but then the autonomous pieces is, is only in, in a certain area. Um, we've seen different approaches to payments where, I mean, there's like, the, the Go Store example, um, where it is, um, it is, it's triggered by a mobile device. We've seen um, some stores where it's um, a credit card that is the identifier. Um, there are some airport examples, for instance, where where that is the um, is the manner of the of the transaction. Um, so there are are different approaches that that absolutely are being um, experimented with and and tried um, and uh, and. I I think that um, you know, kind of one needs to work through what makes the the most sense for both the the type of merchandise that you have and um, you, you know, kind of what is the comfort level of of the shopper um, with these different approaches. Mm -hmm. And Mike, I'll pass that to you. Sucharita just recapped a lot of good points about that um, and the different ways consumers can interact with the technology. How was your decision-making process going into this um, before you adopted the, the hybrid model? Yeah, I mean, I, we, I mean, we've been looking at this technology for the better part of two to three years, uh, went through a pretty exhaustive sourcing process and, you know, certainly landed with iFi for a number of different reasons, but we thought that they were the most com commercially viable, had some of the leading technology in, in the space and offered you know, different solutions, not just a fully cashierless model. Um, and, and for us, that was important, especially in a hybrid version, uh, because you know, uh, for us, we have a scratch kitchen at all of our stores, right? So there's always gonna be employees at the store and we want it to be a little bit more accessible that so, so folks can adopt the technology over time. It was really important for us that we, especially for this store, that we had that option. Customers have that option, right? And you know, we want uh, somebody to be able to come in and pay for an apple with a dollar bill uh, in this particular format. But again, overall, we're looking at a couple different formats uh, and sizes that, you know, meets the needs of certain applications. So 
uh, iFi really, you know, provides the whole suite of options, you know, whether that be app, credit card, uh, in terms of the authorization, but also just these different formats. So certainly uh, we landed on the hybrid version for this particular store and are really excited about the adoption that we're seeing. So. That's great, Mike. And you mentioned, you know, the commercial viability of iFi was at the top of your list and, and the ease of deployment, affordability, things like that. Those are all amazing uh, points to help implement a hybrid solution. And Steve, from the technology side, I wanted to ask you because your technology spans many countries and there's a lot of variables that come with that. The AI is always learning. Does it track customers differently region to region? Uh, yeah, that's a great question. Uh, I would say, you know, from day one, we design our platform, our technology to be country or region agnostic. Getting the store running is really complex. And uh, well, first of all, we make our solution very modular so that, uh, you know, it can adapt to different store shapes, uh, fixtures, different layouts. And uh, we are very successful doing that. That's why you, you see that we've um, launched uh, many stores in many different countries. Uh, so our technology can recognize products and the people no matter where they are, no matter which country they come from. Uh, second uh, is, uh, is more technical. So, uh, you know, in order for the AI to work, uh, we actually developed a very unique approach using simulation and the synthetic data sets to empower the AI to learn uh, by itself without resorting to, you know, very labor intensive, um, manually labeled, uh, labeled data sets. Um, so through our simulation platform, uh, we are able to simulate all sorts of different user behavior, your hairstyle, your facial expression, your pose, your clothes. Uh, we are able to enumerate uh, thousands and millions of store configurations just entirely virtually without the, the need to, you know, doing those uh, labor intensive jobs of adjusting cameras in the physical space. Uh, so with that, um, uh, we make our solution very scalable. Uh, to different store environments. And if there, there's a, one particular store environment that our solution cannot handle, we can easily put that into our simulation environment and train the AI to learn about that and therefore to accommodate for that particular store uh, environment. The third uh, is about uh, uh, privacy. So we have um, designed our solution from day one to be very sensitive about the customer data. So our solution is GDPR and the CCPA compliant. Um, so that uh, uh, our customers can launch uh, the stores to the public with peace in mind. Steve, that's huge. That's absolutely huge for all of the companies based in Europe, all the companies who operate in Europe. Uh, the fact that you guys have synthetic data that can create the simulations um, creates a lot of benefits, uh, including the ability to, you know, scale faster and, and make it uh, more profitable. Looking forward, Sutrita, from an industry analyst point of view, what's what's your take on the future of nano stores? The idea of uh, these, um, these smaller um, autonomous, semi-autonomous, could be fully autonomous stores, um, really, as I mentioned earlier, just makes complete sense for everyone. It's a great way to um, have a broader store strategy, to um, have a, you, you know, kind of a store strategy that fits the needs of shoppers um, without having to necessarily um, have to invest in long-term leases or be stuck with a larger store footprint than what you would be stuck with if it was a traditional um, real estate model. So the idea is, is actually a brilliant one. And um, this idea of autonomousness in this format makes sense because um, you know, as we as we know, there 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 can be you know a lot of variable cost challenges. Um, you know, and you would limit um, the number of hours. Um, you know, that potentially a store like this could be open, which um, which which really provides a lot of of great ability to um, to have flexibility to test and learn, um, and to ultimately serve consumer needs um, wherever wherever they may be. So so I think that though there there's some really really interesting um, reasons to be experimenting with this. This, I think, is a fantastic add-on to whatever um, a store strategy may be. This is never going to be something that's going to completely replace, you know, a large format.
format store or um, a major grocery store. I mean, there's only so much that a nano store can hold, um, but the idea of being able to take it to shoppers wherever they are and provide them um, some really uh, you know, useful products that are fast moving consumer goods that that can be really, really useful. Um, and as you know, kind of we talked about earlier, um, the, the use cases, uh, you, you know, often seem to fall toward grocery and convenience because that's where the fastest moving goods are. But there are a lot of really interesting use cases, um, you know, as we'd alluded to earlier with sporting events or, you know, or specialty um, scenarios where, you, you know, it could be about selling apparel or licensed merchandise or some limited edition types of products that you may be looking to, to showcase to, to an audience, um, you know, in a, in a very limited fashion. Um, so, so I think that, that there, there are a lot of really fascinating use cases and um, we're just scratching the surface of what all of it could be. Um, but uh, but I, I think that, that brands have a lot of um, room to experiment here. Retailers that are often known um, have a lot to potentially experiment with. And even new retailers that are looking to um, touch more consumers or have consumers engage with their brand, but don't necessarily want to sign those you know, 5, 10, 15 year long leases. This is a great way to get there. Absolutely, Sutruda. And, and you made me think of something because you said hours, extending hours is a big thing for retailers. And, you know, we saw in the past some some huge retailers that were typically open in the holiday closing, you know, their store hours. But if they adopted the format you had mentioned earlier with certain sections of the store having this technology, you could get a present last minute and not have to rely on, on our supply chain and the delivery guys working overtime. So that that's amazing as well. Steve, from a technologist side, taking a step back really quick, what about you? Where do you see the future for this? Uh, yeah, I, well, from a technology side, I think the future is already here, right? It's just not evenly distributed. Uh, uh, in fact, I think in, in choice, uh, we are already seeing the, the future of retail. Um, so in my view, there are three different trends we're seeing. Uh, the first is about the convenience. Um, I think choice is a great example here where you know, uh, people can just walk in, grab stuff and leave. Everything is already automatic. And um, uh, the nice thing about choice is that it sits inside apartment building. So literally people can just uh, you know, walk downstairs and grab stuff. And um, uh, that only takes like five minutes uh, to finish the entire shopping trip. This is faster than the fastest um, delivery options today. Right, so uh, I think that uh, this actually fits very well with the trend that uh, uh, instead of asking people to come to a central place to drive you know, miles away to a central place to shop, I think in the future, you're going to see um, more and more stores are located as close as possible where people live and thereby bringing supreme convenience to the local uh, neighborhood. Uh, the, the second part is about the user experience. Uh, again, I want to use a choice as an example because I really love choice. I think that you know, offers this very nice, relaxing and fun shopping environment. Uh, it also, you know, like its name suggests, it also gives choices back to the customers. So the customers can choose whichever way they want to shop. We think definitely uh, you are gonna see um, you know, those hybrid mode um, shopping journey happen in more and more shops like choice. The third is, is about uh, automation by itself. So actually my background shows um, there's this little nano store sitting there. I think Michael also already mentioned uh, about uh, nano stores and potentially it's used in food deserts. Um, we think you know, it fits very well into the thesis where uh, it, it basically it enables this AI and this autonomous store platforms enables uh, a new store format, right? So these were considered in almost impossible in the past. So Nano stores are a great example. So with nano stores, you can play those micro shops almost anywhere from uh, universities to stadiums to concerts and, and to play those stores where people want the most. Uh, we think that uh, you know, you, uh, potentially in the future, you're going to see uh, those na automated nano stores are popping up almost everywhere like a mushroom does. Uh, so in the next 10 years, um, uh, we think that you know, uh, this um, autonomous store concept is autonomous platform will transform from a novelty concept to something almost essential that every retailer needs to uh, equip with.
Absolutely. So you touched on supreme convenience, great user experience, and automated stores becoming ubiquitous. We talked a lot about the consumer and retailer benefits. And if we focus in a little bit more on the retailer side, what do you think they want to see more of? Uh, sure. According to our you know, interaction with uh, many retailers, um, they definitely view this AI, this autonomous retail as one of their key strategies uh, moving forward. Um, one thing in particular is that, um, you know, despite this rapid growth uh, from e-commerce side, so most of the retailers believed that this uh, physical retail will stay strong and thriving, uh, especially uh, for those high frequency, high margin, essential and convenience goods. You know, traditionally, uh, you can you know, do a lot of interesting things online with e-commerce website. You can measure everything, right? Of who you are, what you grab. But now with the technology and AI, we can do essentially the same thing in the offline world as well. So with our uh, AI platform, so we can literally turn those physical shopping grounds into the equivalent of e-commerce website. I think that you know, represents a fundamental shift towards this digital uh, era. The second is that you know, for the retailers, we, we think that, that they need a winning strategy, how to leverage AI and autonomous stores in a way that can really help the stores stay strong and thrive. You know, there, there's a lot of we can do, but fundamentally it's about how to get more goods in front of more customers uh, at, in more locations with more choices and, and thereby bringing more fun and engagement and uh, you know, driving customer satisfaction. Yep, Steve, that is such a huge point. The fundamental shift you mentioned, being able to uh, basically have the same amount of data, if not more than you would get from an e-commerce site and be able to um, be agile and, and change things and give the consumer what they want, which is so difficult. It's increasingly difficult. And we've heard from an analyst and a technologist. So I will pass this to you, Mike, as the retailer on this call. What do you see? Uh, what do you want more of? I, mean, I think uh, Sutruta and Steve did a good job kind of outlining some of the areas that retailers are looking at in terms of deploying AI and specifically Auto autonomous stores and, and frictionless checkout, et cetera. You know, I think ultimately we want what the customer wants because as Sutrita said, you know, we're like, we want to drive revenue. We want to reduce our costs and, and be a profitable and sustainable business that can grow and scale uh, both here in Denver and, and throughout the country, right? So uh, this, these technologies certainly help in that regard. And I think, you know, being able to better leverage that data, as, as Steve said, there is a significant amount of data, uh, things like dwell time and you know gender and, and things of that nature that you know we don't we don't you know, up until now I haven't had that insight into who's actually coming into the store. Yes, you can measure that on, on an e-commerce platform, but now as, as Steve mentioned, you know we we can measure some of those things in the store. You know things like you know heat maps of uh, what parts of the store is performing the best, right, versus others, and and then we can you know, drive merchandising decisions and, and things of that nature. So, you know, I think overall, you know, just really leveraging the full power of platforms such as iFi and working close with them really to develop these features and functionality because it's mutually beneficial for both of us, right? To, to really, to, you know, to really get down into the analytics and, and, the, and the data that these systems provide, right? So, you know, I think we'll, we'll be working closely together on building out that suite of features and functionality that, you know, obviously can benefit choice, but also some of their other customers as well. So. Steve, I'm going to mention something you said earlier, the future is already here. And Sutrita, from an analyst perspective, what is the biggest indicator to you that it is here that autonomous tech is taking off? I, I think that um, there are, were a lot of questions um, back when, say for instance, the very first stores came out like um, Amazon Go around the cost and around the viability. And I think what Mike has demonstrated is that um, there are absolutely reasonable and viable approaches that companies of all sizes can consider. There are different use cases and examples. And there are, of course, the food deserts. He mentioned the apartment complex, um, you know, which are very, very different use cases, but, um, you know, with the, with the right assortment and with the right 
um, technology, which has developed and evolved um, to a point where um, it is much more affordable and it makes a lot more sense for um, experimentation and, in, and it offers an opportunity for innovation. And, um, and also, I think that where we go next from here is, um, is probably also a bit of um, experimentation with the retail industry overall. One of the biggest um, things that we've been hearing about is the idea of retailer media networks and um, retailers bringing, um, you know, kind of different type of advertising, creative advertising, leveraging advertising as a means of uh, driving profitability at a store level, um, while also serving brands and providing value to shoppers. And um, an autonomous store is, uh, is, is a great format to pilot and test some of those types of initiatives. Um, brands are constantly looking for new ways to get in front of consumers, particularly um, for new and innovative products. And um, you know, what better way to, to do this than to do it in a, in a you know, kind of in a smaller format store in the beginning versus you know, trying to do a national rollout where you know kind of it's a much much larger investment so so i'm i'm excited about the possibilities that exist and um, the fact that the the price points now seem much more reasonable the fact that there are deployments with different types of retailers and different types of settings that the only use case is not um, you know, a big company out of Seattle, it's, uh, it's really promising. And, um, and I think that there's, there's a lot of exciting um, opportunity for, for the entire industry to consider. And Mike, hats off to you. Um, Sucharita mentioned, you know, you are proof that this technology is taking off, that it is within reach for uh, all retailers. And so we appreciate people like you helping move the industry forward. And Steve, Sucharita, Mike, thank you all for joining today. This was a great chat. Thanks for having us. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Julia. Yeah. Thank you.